All right, everybody, welcome back to the next tutorial. Um, in this one, we're going to be learning about modules. Um, <clears throat> so you've seen us use like the built-in integer function. Um, you've seen us use the input function. You've learned how to make your own functions. There's a ton more built-in functions. Um, but if you're wanting like real specific functions that aren't necessarily built into Python, um, Python has a bunch of what are called modules. Um, so for instance, a real common one to use is the random module. So say I want to somewhere in my code generate a random number. Um, you would do something like, uh, we'll make a variable called x and it equals it would do something like equal random number. Um, that's not really a thing in Python. Like, there's no random number uh, function right out of the gate. What you need to do is import. Uh, you would type the keyword import random, and what this does is, the people at Python that have made Python, they have made a ton of really helpful modules to use. So if you want real specific um, functionality within Python. Uh, there's a lot of modules you can import that help you use certain tools for very specific cases. Uh, one of them is called the random module. So when I import, I type in the keyword import, and then you type the module name, and the one we're going to be using is random. I'll show you a few other ones later. Uh, but now that I've imported ran the random module, you can access it anywhere in your code, and it has a bunch of useful tools to help you generate random numbers or pick random choices out of a list. Uh, so let's make a variable called random number. And we want to give it a random number between uh, zero or be between zero and 10. So what you would do to access the module that we've imported at the top, you can type in the name of the module and then you put a dot. So what this is saying is says, hey, access that random module that we imported at the top up here. And after the dot, you can access any of the functionality that's in this module. And there's a bunch of like built in functions that are in the module. And the, a real common one is called rand range, and it stands for random range. And it's a function. So we put open close parentheses and it takes it has two parameters, the start range and end range. Um, and again, you, uh, this is a real common one, so you'll probably memorize this. But if it was like some real obscure one that you only use like once a year for some random project you're working on, you'll probably Google like uh, you'll Google a certain module and look at how you use all the functionality within those modules. I do it all the time. Um, but I know this one. This one's a random and then ran range, and we're wanting it to generate a number between like zero and ten. So you can put zero and ten. And what this does, again. We're making a variable called random number, and we're going to assign it. Uh, we're going to access the random module that we imported, and put a dot. And we're accessing the function within that random module called rand range, and it takes two parameters. And we're throwing in the arguments zero and ten. The first argument would be the start range or the the starting number, and the second one's the end number. So what this is going to do is return a random number between zero and ten. So let's print random number. And now every time we run this program, it should generate a random number. So there's nine. We'll run it again. Zero. We'll run it again. Four. And we'll run it again. And actually, uh, I told you something incorrectly. I put ten. So when I put 10, it actually doesn't include the number 10. It's going to be 0 through 9. So if I do 11, it goes from 0 to 10. I'm pretty positive it doesn't include uh, the final number. Um, so let's, let's do this to test it. For i in range, we're going to do something 100 times. Uh, so let's do this. Let's run this code 100 times. Because I want to test something. So what, what this is saying is like, hey, do this a hundred times. We've got a for loop, and we're going to do whatever's in here a hundred times. We're going to generate a random number between zero and ten because it doesn't include the final number. It's like up to eleven, but it doesn't include eleven. And then we're going to print it. And I just want to test because I'm pretty sure it doesn't include the last number. Um, so if we do it a hundred times, more than likely one of them should be eleven. If I was wrong. Uh, yeah, so if you scroll through all these numbers, uh, you don't. There's 11's not in here, 
So just keep that in mind if you ever want to generate a random number. Uh, it's it's um, the starting number and then uh, whatever number you put as the end number, it doesn't include that one. I don't know why that is. That's just how they made this function uh, for Python. Um, so let me show you another one. So again, the random module has a bunch of different functions. It's like a ton of different functions that help you with random number generation or doing random things. Um, another one, we'll make a list called, or well, we'll do this, names. We'll make a list called names and it has our typical names we've been using so far. Jody, Bob, and Bill. Um, what you can do is we'll make a variable called random name and it equals, and we're going to access the random module again with a dot, and the function we're going to use this time is called choice. And what the choice function does is it takes a list and grabs a random item out of the list. So you have to pass in the list as an argument, so we're going to pass in our names list, and then after we've done that we want to print the random name that it grabbed. So again, we have a, we're importing the random module because we want the functionality of doing random things, we make a list called names and it contains Jody, Bob, and Bill. And then we want a variable called random name where it takes a random name out of this list. And to do that, we access our random module that we imported. And we're using the choice function that's part of the random module. And we have to pass in the list that we want to perform it on, which we're using our names list. And then after it's grabbed that random name, we're printing it out to the screen. And it grabbed Jody. But if we do it again, it grabbed Jody again, so let's do it again. Bob, see that time it grabbed Bob. So it'll always be random. Um, so that's one of the modules you can use. Uh, what I, one of the things I used to ask when I was learning this was, uh, why do I have to import random? Shouldn't it just be built into Python? Um, and it is technically built into Python, but why do I have to always import it like that and the reason why is because there's a million modules that python comes with and if it were to essentially what happens when i type import random it's going into a python file that the people at python have created and it's copying and pasting all that code right here when the when the programs ran and if you were to go ahead and import the thousands of modules that python has created for you that's like a waste of memory on your computer so python by default kind of gives you the bare minimum of what you need and if you want more specific things you would use the import function to import those modules but like I said what I used to ask is why does it why doesn't it just include all this by default why do I have to do this import statement and the reason why is if they were to import the thousands of modules they've made automatically like when you run this program it would take up so much memory because it imported a thousand or a million lines of code to uh, automatically give, the, give you those modules by default. So they take out the ones that are used for real specific cases. Um, another real popular uh, or real common import that you will use is called the time module. And it has a lot of stuff in it, but one of the things you can do is uh, you can import time. And we'll do this, we'll print the word hello on the screen. And then what we're gonna do is access the time module and inside of it, there's a ton of functions, but uh, one um, we can use is called sleep. And it takes how many, how many seconds do you want? Uh, what it's gonna do, it's gonna get to this line of code that says time.sleep. And then uh, what it takes for a parameter is how long do you want, uh, want it to sleep for? So for instance, we'll say five seconds and then we'll print world. So what it'll do is it'll print the word hello, and then what it's gonna do is when it gets here, it's actually gonna wait five seconds and then print world. So we'll run that. So it, print, it prints hello, and wait five seconds, and then it prints world. So that's a real common one. Um, there's also, a, a, if you ever wanted to, and we'll do this later, if you ever wanted to make like a Windows type GUI interface, which I actually do a lot from my job at work. Uh, I build a lot of uh, tools uh, for the department I work for. And I always build like Windows interfaces, you know, that have the typical like OK cancel buttons with text fields and uh, drop down boxes and, you know, what looks like a normal typical Windows or Apple or Linux type GUI interface. There's actually a uh, module called tkinter. I don't know what that stands for, 
uh, but it's just just it's called T Kenter. I think some people call it Kenter or something else. I call it T Kenter. I don't know exactly how it's pronounced, but it's a module in Python that gives you access to create GUI interfaces, and uh, it's kind of a more complicated one. <clears throat> Once you learn it, uh, it's not that bad. But we'll get we'll actually do a whole video series on T Kenter, and we'll make like a uh, a Windows GUI later on. But just know that's a module within Python. There's actually a date time module that helps you work with dates and time zones and uh, like making objects that contain uh, day, month, year, and running operations on them. That's uh, a real common one. Uh, if you ever work with CSV files or like Excel files, there's a CSV module that helps you work with Excel files and uh, comma separated value files. I actually use that one quite a bit. Um, there's a ton of them, but typically the way you find out about these is there's like a particular thing you're wanting to work on. Like say you know how to use SQL um, uh, and you're wanting to like use SQL but within Python, uh, which I've had to do before. So you would go to you would go to like Google and type in like Python SQL module. And this is how I usually find out about different modules uh, and just click like the top link. And um, as you can see here, uh, don't worry about this from import thing. We'll get to that later. But just know, oh, I see there's a there's a SQL uh, library within Python, and I think this one right here, this is actually someone uh, a library someone else has made. It's not the built-in one that comes with Python. The one that comes with Python is called a uh, SQLite three. I just know that because I've used it before. Yeah, so. Um, also go to 3.8. So import SQLite 3. And you can go to our code and do SQLite 3. And now we have access to this SQLite 3 uh, uh, module from within Python. And if you want to learn to use it, you just go on this um, website right here and it tells you how to do all sorts of stuff with SQL from within Python. And um, I mean, if you don't know how to use SQL or what SQL is, don't worry about it. I'm just, I'm just kind of giving it as an example. Like, if there's anything you want to know, if there's a module for it to help you with, uh, it, the module probably exists, and you can go on Google and find it. Um, like the random one, date, time, time, SQLite 3, Tkinter is used for Windows GUIs. If you want to access, like, certain attributes about someone's uh, Windows session, there's a... There's, like, a Windows 32... I think it's called Windows 32 module that lets you access all sorts of information about a user's computer um, that you run the code on, um, all types of stuff. But we'll get more in depth with modules later on down the road, especially when we, I'm gonna make a, an actual, uh, like pretty in-depth video game uh, with Python later on in the tutorials. And I'll be using the Pi game module and show you how to use it. Um, but yeah, what I would do, just go on Google and look up all different types of uh, modules that come with Python and practice all the different functions that are in them. Um, oh, shit. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.